Good evening. My name is Paul Reynolds, and my artist manager profile will be on Albert Bernard Grossman, also known as The Bear. This is your agenda as follows, and I'll give you a couple seconds to read it, but we're going to get right on into it, and we're gonna, I don't want to take too much of your time out. Mr. Albert Bernard Grossman was born in, of Russian Jewish immigrant parents in Chicago. He would remain there until his mid-30s, eventually taking residence in upstate New York, where he would continue to make his mark on the industry. Continuing on, as far as jobs outside of the industry, after he ascertained his master's degree in economics, he went on to become a venue owner. The name of the location was called the Gate of Horn. This location hosted folk music events, where he would broker bookings with folk and gospel singer Odetta Holmes, as well as the legendary Bob Gibson. Eventually, this led him into managing Mr. Gibson as well as Odetta. The initial success of Bob Gibson is what projected Mr. Grossman into his first dealings with com the commercial process of the music industry. This would uh, in turn lead him to produce the first Newport Folk Festival in 1959 in the great state of Rhode Island. This festival actually is still in existence and is hosting a wide variety of of artists. Uh, case in point, uh, Grammy nominated Gary Clark Jr. As far as artists that he managed during his uh, during his career, he actually had uh, Bob Gibson, as I stated before, as well as Odetta Holmes, but he also had Peter, Paul, and Mary. If you're wondering who these people are, they're the group that sung Puff the Magic Dragon, the folk group that sung Puff the Magic Dragon. However, his notable artists were Bob Dylan as well as Janis Joplin. We all know Bob Dylan as the uh, award-winning songwriter, Nobel Peace Prize winner. And we also remember Janis Joplin for being an epic singer in the rock industry. And her career was cut short by drug addiction, sadly to say. Notably, he established uh, relationships with Bob Dylan in Greenwich Village in a basement club while promoting Peter, Paul, and Mary. Another big deal in his career is he established he is the reason that we have Woodstock. He brought in a, mul a multiple, multiple talent, m multiple talented people. Um, case in point, Jimi Hendrix, Van, um, Van Morrison, along with other other clients. Uh, the band that actually brought you the song called "The Weight." Mr. Grossman's man management style. He's actually accredited for being the archetype or the actual bringing us the format that we have in personal management today. He knew that that we could monetize the form and did everything in his power to do so. He also was known as the bear. Whether you met him as a teddy bear or a grizzly, depending on what point of his career you met him in. Uh, he has been known to be a tough cookie in his, cookie in his dealings. One example is him keeping the band uh, NRBQ on the shelf for a long period of time and not letting them out of contract because he had a he had an issue with them. He also caused some stagnation in the career of Carly Simon, who brought you the song "You're So Vain." So that shows you that he was a bit emotional at times. <clears throat> Excuse me. As far as good decisions, bad decisions. I think the best decision he made was actually inviting Bob Dylan to his home and locking that artist along with the band and uh, Jimi Hendrix and other artists in there and just letting them work through their creative processes. Let them not be stressed about the touring, about writing music, about anything. Just let them play. Just let them do what we like to do as artists and just create. As we noted in this week's readings, uh, Michael Jeffrey made a detrimental mistake in not ensuring that great Jimi Hendrix got that moment to reset from the stress of the fans recording and touring. I also give him kudos for his economical prowess, and this inspires me to want to become a bit more proficient, proficient in numbers. As far as everything that he's done for the industry and everything that he's done, done so great, I do have issue some issues with him. Um, I professionally think that he over overstretched himself uh, going towards the end of his career. 
Uh, as I stated, he had businesses that he participated in. I didn't reveal everything as he, he started a record label. And I, I, I gave you that information. But that move makes logical sense when you're in the music industry. Now, the restaurants that he had, along with the incomplete movie theater, it, it just depends. You know, and you want to diversify your, your, your funds. You want to diversify your income. However, you have to be focused on something. If, if you want to be a personal manager, I don't think really that those kind of businesses are conducive to what you're trying to do. It's basically what I'm getting at. And however, the the movie, the music video center, the publishing uh, companies are solid investments when you're dealing with the music industry and you want to continue to deal with artists. Uh, I don't see any issues with that. If I were to continue to do music and be successful in it, I would consider these things. Um, so that's pretty much, th those are a few of the things that I, I see issue with. However, I also see issue with the way that he handled Bob Dylan. He actually locked Bob Dylan into a 10-year contract at 20%. And that's not that's not anything that you want to do, with, especially with current artists. Like, I would never be able to lock myself into 20% with, say, a Beyonce or, say, a even a Jay-Z. I would, as an artist manager, I know I wouldn't be able to lock them in for 10 years saying, hey, we're going to work together for 10 years. And you're going to give me 20% of your money. They're going to look at me like I'm crazy. They're going to say, no, um, you're going to take this percentage or that percentage, and I'm probably going to take it because Beyonce is one of the top tier female artists of our time, as well as Jay-Z. Jay-Z had kids, but Beyonce had kids, but Jay-Z made $44 million last year. So when you're dealing with artists like Bob Dylan, the guy that wrote Along the Watchtower, you want to kind of redefine those things you want to rework those contracts and he didn't do that and i can only imagine if he did that with bob dylan what he was doing to his other artists lessons learned i think overall you can cultivate and guide great artists without taking them through the ringer you have to be able to find talent and provide them with the tutelage of the business edge while maintaining a great environment for creativity Mr. Grossman is very important important to the culture, and he did that. He pushed the artist. It took him to get Bob Dylan out there. It took him to get the Peter Paul and Mary out there because I don't, you know, not too many people were looking for for folk music to really be as as great as it was. Uh, but at the at the time, you know, through all the tra transitions and changes of doo wop and going into the '80s, where you know '70s and '80s, where we were dealing with rock. Bob Dylan was there. He was a part of the process. And it's because of Mr. Grossman. It's because of the way he handled his, his business is why we have those artists today. Um, the band Odetta, the band and Odetta were actually uh, signed to him as well. And as I stated before, it, it took him in order to bring these people to the forefront of the industry. Another thing that I learned from him is last but not least, you have to have a certain level of professionalism and tact. And that's key to a successful career, especially in the industry today. Unless you know you're one of the gatekeepers. If you're a gatekeeper, you can conduct yourself as, as you need to. But when you're initially starting out, we have to be able to, to deal with people. We have to be approachable. And he started out approachable. He strived for authenticity in his music with with his artists but eventually it just got to be too much for him now it, and this could be attributed one of the things that could be attributed to the death of janice joplin however you still got to be able to carry carry yourself through that process and it's easier said than done because i've seen my my fair share of issues and and dealing with life and death it's kind of hard to kind of motivate yourself sometimes but at the end of the day the people that are here for you now are the people that you really want to focus on and and help. And I think he kind of lost focus of that. And that could go back into one of the, the good decisions and bad decisions piece where I think he could have done a bit better as far as his personal relationships with his artists, as well as how he handled Janis Joplin, because I'm pretty sure he knew 
that she had a, an addiction that she was dealing with. And if you're a manager, you're not just managing their music, you're managing them. You're almost serving as a, as a psychiatrist, a doctor, psychotherapist, whatever, whatever, you're there in every capacity to help cultivate these artists, not just as an artist, but as a person too. And you kind of, you're supposed to be there to help them. But at any rate, he was still a great guy, as I stated. He gave us a lot of great artists. And he will be forever attributed the as the architect of what we do today in the personal management industry. I appreciate your time. I will go on and show you my references. Um, but this concludes my brief.